We pray, Lord, that you will give us an understanding heart, a listening ear, and a willing mind to put into practice the things we will hear. We thank you for the way you have started this meeting. We pray, Lord, that we will get results from this weekend. Millionaires will emerge from here. Factories will emerge from here. International businesses will emerge from here. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. I like people sitting erect. I like people sitting erect. That's an intellectual posture. Sometimes lying back prevents you from grabbing. I want to thank our mommy for her wonderful message. The first day I heard her, it increased my confidence to do what I'm doing because at one time I was like a lone voice in the Niger Delta. And um, I'm so glad that people can still preach the truth the way it is supposed to be spoken. The problem we will have with many of you here this weekend is not what you are hearing, it's your reaction to what you are hearing. There are preconceived, calcified mental attitudes that the church had built into our minds, circumstances have built into our minds, that it takes a lot of spiritual hammer to break them. And I pray that your mind will be open to learn. I want to thank our daddy here for organizing this seminar. In other churches, they pay to listen to such seminars. In Lagos, it is 7,500 is sitting for some of these seminars. We are going to domesticate what we are going to be sharing with you. I pray that the instrumentalists will come one hour before time to tune these things tomorrow. I, when I was in the university, I went to watch Third World. I left the University of Ibadan to Uniben. The program that was to start by 10 in the evening, the musicians started arranging instruments by 9 in the morning. And when they said, let us welcome the third world, there was no quick, 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 quick. They just came out, do, 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 try, jar, love. So the church can graduate. You have very good instruments here. It's just, this is a human factor. I want you to come early as a Sunday school teacher and as a doctor. I went to Sunday school 30 minutes before my bishop, before church resumed. If you can't take God's thing seriously, he won't take you seriously. Praise the Lord. I came with some books. My tomorrow said that if you don't want a black man to know a secret, write it in a book. I'll be teaching you mostly from money is an idiot. And then the, um, the, the principles of Mary Magdalene, the principles of Tama, and then there are other books there. The oil of marriage is only for married people and for those about to get married. It talks about sex in marriage. Don't leave it on the dining table for your children to read. There are CDs on wealth creation and DVDs making many rich. Um, there are other ones there about how you can start business with very minimal capital and then empowered to create wealth. And then there are booklets there recreating yourself. The story of Afe Babalola, senior advocate of Nigeria, who stopped in primary six. The last classroom he entered was in primary six. And by hard work, he became a senior advocate of Nigeria. You'd come out, put your legs down and sit erect. Sit erect. Sit erect. After Babalola became a senior advocate, a businessman, and built a university, he stopped in only primary six in Adoekiti. So, you can recreate yourself. The story of Lex in Kaira is there. He trekked 3,000 miles to go to university in America. From 1957 to 1960, he was born again. He left Tumbuka. He trekked to uh, Kampala after one and a half years, then trekked from Kampala to Cairo in order to go to university. Today, he's a professor in Cambridge University. He wrote a book titled, I Will Try. 
They carry you with cars to school and you still fail. They should use Bible to slap your face. You pay school fees of 28,000 in Nigeria. You say yeah, you can't pay school fees. They should flog you. And then there is um, um, financial intelligence and um, investment options in retirement. And then there is um, the prerogative of mercy. So there are, other, there are materials there. They are cheap and you can get them. I want to share with you key principles that changed my life. I showed your pastor, our pastor here, my photograph the year I went to university. I left a mud house to the university. A gutter was beside my house. We used to bath the wind, the, the, our toilets, when you go to the toilet, heaven and earth will be bearing witness. This is not in a village, in a township. In a township. And my story changed. I will share with you some key things that will help you. And I pray that you pay attention. When you hear mommy speaking like this, you say it's a pastor's wife. So she went to school. No, it's not like that. These key principles, if you don't follow principles, you can't get anything. Second Kings chapter 4, from verse 1. Just in case there are millionaires here, if you want to buy a house in South Africa, I have a company that I work with. You can buy very good houses in round South Africa. I stayed there for three months and I brought the lady to Nigeria here that runs the company. Your finances are guaranteed, the buildings are guaranteed. You can buy the house and rent it and be paying, they'll be paying you rent and you can go on holidays. With Boko Haram, you need a second home to escape to sometimes. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 1. Now the wife of a son of the prophets cried to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. But the creditor has come to take my two sons to be slaves. Verse 2. The day I read, God bless the day I read this passage. God bless the day I read this passage in the Amplified Bible. Elisha said to her, what do, can I do for you? What shall I do for you? Tell me. What do you have? What have you of sale value in the house? That's why I was looking for the Amplified Bible. Here it says, what have you of sale value in the house? Please look up. Here was the wife of a prophet, not Ghanaian prophets. They are called telephone numbers. If you call a telephone number, you are a prophet. You are ministering the word of knowledge. Because the telephone number already exists. Do you understand what I mean? <laughs> Don't look at me like that. Wahala. Here was a prophet who died for church. If you join winners, the post anointing will not make you rich. It's your personal effort that will make you rich. Because this man walked directly under Elisha, but he died poor. You can belong to a big church and still be poor. I belong to a very big denomination in this country. We have some of the poorest pastors. You can be in a great nation and be in California that is one of the biggest economies in the world and still be poor. There are beggars in America. There are people freezing to death in Europe, homeless people. Am I right? Elisha asked the woman one basic question. If, if it were to be a Nigerian preacher that the wife, need, the, 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 the prophet's wife needed money, either you would have told her to sow a seed Am I speaking to somebody here? Oh, shook. Hey, yeah, every spirit of poverty. Then break ancestral causes and break all the causes and causes and causes. And tell her to change her name from wood to glory. A man answering Bush became president. His son became president. His son is a governor. 
firewood didn't run after him. African pastors are looking for work to do. Instead of looking for the diamonds in Africa, we're looking for demons that they planted in the ground. Mumu ministry. Don't look at me. Nobody does me anything in this country. The simple answer to an economic question was an economic answer. What have you in your house that people can buy? Until you answer that question, work for Shell, you are still a potential poor man. Because if they sack you, you don't have an income that can last you for six months. And because your lifestyle has become very expensive, you will die prematurely. Many people who retire from oil companies, they did a research, they don't live more than 10 years. Because they pay you 200 million, 200 million. If you go to, if you go to and check Petra Christian Academy and you see the building I'm building, 200 million is small money. So when you are working for Shell, that they pay you 2 million naira a month, it's an indication that you're a very foolish person. That we use your brain for a month and we're just dashing you for renting your brain two, more, two million. Why can't you use that brain to generate 20 million for yourself in a month? Does it make sense? Eh? Somebody like you that is not in tie, you will be very angry with me. If you work for a bank, they pay you 200,000 naira a month. They are telling you that you are a mumu. That we rented this your good brain for a month. And we rented your brain for 200,000. Don't you have common sense to think that if I can rent this my brain for them for 200,000 naira a month, that I can also use this brain to produce 2 million for myself? Does it make sense? Why are you people looking at me like that now? Only 3% of humanity, even those who went to Harvard, 3% of them in 1953 wrote down what they were going to do for themselves after graduation. Some years later, they did a research. That 3% was richer than the remaining 97%. And they lived longer. The 3% richer than the remaining 97% joined together. That's Harvard. 3% of the population employ about 90% of the population. They rent their brains to make wealth for themselves. Money has no religion. Money is neutral. If a Muslim is wiser than you, like as Dangote is wiser than us, we will contribute to his wealth. And Pentecostal money will not protest that I'm going to a Muslim. Am I speaking to somebody? Income is a spring. Wealth is a lake. It is not how much you make like Nigeria that matters. It is how much you keep. Germans are known for saving more than Americans. Americans are in deficit. They are owing. Germans are rescuing Greece. So it's not the salary you are paid that determines wealth. And in fact, wealth that only one generation can eat is a sinful wealth. It's a disobedient wealth. Wealth must pass from one generation to the other. Righteousness dictates and mandates and expects that a righteous man will leave an inheritance for his children's children. When you see people, when people die, when they are crying, they will say, we regret to announce, not that that man is a poor man. Well, when they say, call to glory, not that the man left something behind. When they are saying 20 years in mind, know that they are collecting house rent from his building. How can I go and do 20 years in, in remembrance of my father? For what? 
I should remember the mud house. I showed you my, the picture of the In my area, when they say obituary, oh, regret to announce the death of Chief Okubuluku, survived by eight wives and 32 children, amongst whom are Dr. This, USA, Engineer This, USA, and many others, too numerous to mention. All the too numerous to mention, they are the Popogari, the refuse. And most of them will be Pentecostals. life is that it is the poor man that makes the rich man rich. It's the poor man that buys Okada. Rich man doesn't enter Okada. Poor man buys fuel. Rich man doesn't buy fuel. They call them cabal as if they are spirit. What have you of sale value? The day your brain opens and you answer that question with results. Poverty will run away from you without any prayer. Because money is neutral. Let me speak it in pidgin English. What do you get when person feed buy from you? Until you have a product that you sell, your life is at risk. Nigeria is a poor country because we sell only one product, oil. The Indians, they produce multiplicity of products. Tata Corporation, so many things and so many things and so many things. The Germans, I don't know if you follow what I'm saying. What do you get? Some of you here, you are the ones that contribute to other people's wealth. When you receive salary, you pay house rent, you pay school fees, you buy books, you buy pure water, you buy this, you buy that, then at the end, you say ends cannot meet. Because you are the one that is always doling out. My son is about to go for youth service. He's 20, he will be 24 in November. He first bought four plots of land last year. <laughs> I married as a youth couple. I bought a car as a youth copper. I decided to preach with you. Because this khaki, you didn't inherit it from Taisho Larry. I want to wash your brain. <laughs> I married as a youth copper. At the end of youth service, I bought a car. This boy is about to buy two plots of land again for 1.8 million before going for youth service. How? At the age of 13, he started writing nursery school books with our computer. And so he has produced several books that are used in nursery school. Pastor is here, is my witness. My daughter lives with you. Your daughters have lived with me. So I'm not telling you a story that is, I'm not Miles Moro, neither am I Mike Mudok. This one, I'm Mike Apoki. So this boy produces books. He doesn't sleep. I asked him for the last three years, how many houses have you visited in Ugeli? He said, none. He doesn't pursue frivolities. He will write books and write books and write books. Today, we buy paper of more than three million to publish his books and my wife's books. My wife is a nurse, midwife by training. But if we wait until we inject people, we will be poor. I know a matron who retired from one of the biggest hospitals in this town. She didn't have a house. And she was thinking of going to England to go and work after retirement with snow. In my house, we produce drawing books. We produce exercise books. We produce notebooks. 
we produce academic excellence workbooks. Academic excellence workbooks, one school can buy a quarter of a million. If you have 10 schools buying a quarter of a million, that's 2.5. By the time, and it's more than that, the, the money that circulates from books in my household. When school wants to resume, we sleep in the printing press. We produce sweaters. We, we, they produce sweaters for us. As a young girl, instead of showing your breasts and showing your buttocks, use your brain. Because breast has expiring date. <laughs> Pastor, forgive me. Just, I'm a worried man. Don't mind my... Don't raise your breast with barbed wire to reach your neck. You are a foolish woman. Mar married women do it now. They are discussing with a married woman. Half of her breast are showing. Are you stupid? I'm showing your buttocks. Use your brain. Do you know if you go and learn how to make sweaters now as a young girl? Just sweaters. Each sweater in Port Harcourt can be supplied to a school for 500. A thousand sweaters, 500,000. Ten schools, five million. If you are traveling along um, uh, uh, um, Ogbo Hill Road, before you reach Ovom Junction, on the right, there's Aris Plaza Hotel. There's an uncompleted building that has been there for years. I don't know if they've completed it now. There is a family that has been making sweaters. They are from Ohafia from before the war. You know, you, they've been producing sweaters. Any child from that family that is going into marriage goes with the technique of making sweaters, including the boys. My school sweaters were initially produced by my friend's wife. My friend has one of the biggest hospitals in Imo State, my classmate. The woman's father was a retired justice, a keruche. And she's a nurse midwife by training. She's half caste. She produces sweaters, plus the hospital. But my Eric Osima said, rat when get one hole, you know they live long. If you produce sweaters, I was preaching this in Heroes of Faith Church. Somebody, they just sent the daughter for the training. And the daughter was changed to my, uh, to my school. And she made a sweater in the name of my school with a different design. If not that we have already had contracts that ran into millions, we will have changed to her own design. She is in SS3. I went to Nekede Poli to preach. Chapel of Grace. How many of you know Chapel of Grace, Nekede Poli? I went to preach there. I saw one young boy. If you see his hands said he looks like refrigerator. Powerful. The bracelet he was wearing, I got there. Boy, what does your father do? He said, my father is a civil servant. What of you? He said, I make hats. He said, most of the hats the girls are wearing here, I produce them. What are you studying? He said, structural engineering or civil engineering. Makes hats. Makes for mass choirs goes for trade fair. One of my pastors, his wife makes hats. He's my senior pastor. If you transfer her, they transferred her to Eleme, it was good business because it was closer to her barn on nature for her raw materials. They transferred her to Lagos, it was good business because it was closer to Kotonou. So when we want to go for a convention, she will make hats for the mass choir. She doesn't, she advertises her market. She will just make one fine one and sit near her husband. Mommy, this your heart is fine. He said, I made it. Mommy, it's a lie. He said, will I be telling you lies? Put an order and she will produce for one, produce for one, produce for one, produce for one. Fine hearts. When CNN did an interview on emerging millionaires in Africa, it was one Mrs. Ogun Lacey that produces one set of clothing for children called rough and tumble. Some of you know it. She was looking for pajamas for his, her children. She couldn't get. She went to Tejuo Show and bought materials and made pajamas. 
From there, people started ordering, ordering, ordering. They asked her, are you going to export? He said, no. He said, Nigeria is 150 million. And 70% of our population are children. So I have a big market that is about three countries to five countries joined together. Before CNN noticed her from a simple talent. Let me be organized because I'm, I'm preaching from my mind. If you are to have good business product, Professor Parada, have I told you that before here? About Professor Parada? Professor Parada is from Bangladesh. He is a contemporary of Muhammad Yunis. Mahatma Yunis is the founder of the Grameen Bank. He won the Nobel Peace Prize some years back. The Grameen Bank is a bank of small, small, 2,000, 3,000, 3, that is now as big as First Bank and Union Bank joined together from Bangladesh, the poorest country in the world. In fact, where there is poverty, there are more opportunities to make wealth because ignorance is prevalent, indolence is prevalent, competition is not there. That's why me, I know they come out Nigeria. Are they here with the Kangpe, Pastor Basa and Jo? I will dig it with them. I not go contest election. If they remove subsidy, I increase the price of my commodities. I, am I not preaching well? I preach... <laughs> I preach, I preach around this continent. If I stay in my house for 90 days, that's a big holiday. Professor Paradas' theory is that society is arranged like a pyramid with those who have Homer Jeep at the top, those who enter aeroplane at the top, those who drive Pathfinder at the middle, Morano, Camry at the middle, those who enter public transport at the base, if you can provide what the base will need on a daily basis, and say you will be solving a social problem, you will remain relevant and important to the society, and you will make profit. And that you will never go out of business. Because the Bible says, according to my own addition, the poor will be with you always. So, pastor, please, I'm not reading notes, so tell me service when I finish product. Eh? If you must do well, you must attack the dining table economy. What is it that people need on the dining table? Number one, water. A few weeks back, a few months back, water was more expensive than petrol. A liter of petrol was 65 naira. A liter of water was 100 naira. So if you produce water, it is better to own a water factory than to own a refinery. I, was, I went to preach in Lagos, and they were carrying me in a convoy of jeeps to go and preach. And we passed through, we wanted to pass through your job barracks. And somebody said, stop! You are a mumu, they know you, you are a baby factory, Mama Joshua, Mama Junior. You are, a, you are a milk factory and a Vitaphone mattress. If they only know you for children. Some of you deliver every year. Don't you have any other work you do with your husband? Is that, how, is that a method of church growth? <laughs> Pastor, why are you pointing? I was guilty. Oh. I had my first child 1986, 87, 88. At one time, all the children were wearing napkin and sucking for the bottle. I told myself, Kini <laughs> Ele Pastor didn't shake. I said, Pastor. Pastor said, I am so, so, so pure water. The man greeted him. I said, Pastor, why did they treat you with so much honor? He said, this barrack has no water. He said, so I supply them water. If he molests me now, tomorrow he won't have water to drink. 
Somebody say authority. A church can have a pure water factory. Anglican Church, Equerry Diocese, they have a pure water factory, blessed water. St. Michael's Cathedral, Abba, they have a pure water factory. Tithe and offering is not for building, it's for feeding. This is so that they might be uh, building in my compound. So, so that there might be meat. The house was already built through launching and donation. The reason why African pastors die early is that the stress is too much. They can't go on vacation. Because if they travel, the offering will reduce. As I travel now, I'm receiving bank alerts. <laughs> they are paying money to my account. If it's your offering, I won't come, frankly speaking. It's now that I know that I'm really called, frankly speaking. <laughs> because sometimes I was preaching when there was no money in the house. I would preach so that I can get honorarium. Now I know I am called. Money good though. The centurion sent the elders of Israel to go and meet Jesus. Why he built church for them. Imagine an unbel a, 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 a Gentile sending the elders of Israel message that his daughter is sick. They say, he, this man, he, you deserve to go to his house. Say, he built church for us. No money. I say, how many liters of water do you make, pastor? He said, I make one million liters of water daily. One million liters. A, a, a sachet is about 500 mils. Let's even assume it is one liter. If he makes a profit of one naira, the raw material is, is readily available. If he makes a profit of one naira per liter, he makes a million naira daily. When that man is praying, he doesn't shout too much. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. When poor man is praying, it's too violent. There's a pastor when he's praying there. I wonder how long he wants to live. Common African demons that are illiterate, you are shouting like this. <laughs> Somebody came to my house and they were, I, I had a conference, they were shouting. I said, no, we don't pray like that here again. We discuss with our father. What could be disturbing my neighbors? I went to, okay, he, he has a cosmetic factory. Employ they do two services in his factory. I was telling assemblies of God, you want to build university. I was speaking to their, their general, general superintendent, Sweke, and all of them. You want to build a university, you are running up and down. Why don't you sink a pure water factory in Okoto where about 300 to 300,000 people come every day? I mean, every periodically. And make them buy water, make all your district superintendents' wives distributors of pure water. Do you know they won't break away? I told them, make evangel bread. There's a big church in Lagos. By 2 a.m., their bread is already in Agege. Anything in the dining table. Why is Dangote rich rice? Macaroni? Sugar? Just count them. All of you have bought today. Look for something. The day I read the statement in the Bible, replenish. Look for something that finishes that people will buy on a daily basis. Don't wait until you will hammer. You might knock your finger with the hammer. My neighbor went and bought caterpillar. Bought uh, graders. Bought all that. And he was dying until he started producing pure water now. And he told me, now I have started business. They hold two services daily in that man's pure water factory. Do not sell caterpillar axles. How many people buy caterpillar axles? Leyland didn't make profit in uh, Ibadan. 
because they were making Land Rovers. Land Rovers were made of aluminum parts. They don't rust. A Land Rover can last for 40 years. So they produce. I met one man. He said, he said Daddy, pray for my business to move. I said, What do you do? He said, Intercom. Intercom. Come. I asked him, when you, when you make one intercom, how many years does this last? Like, say it can last for 20 years. Do they call you to come and read? Say they don't spoil often. So how many people have intercom? You are an architect. You are waiting for people to come and give you building plan so that you can collect 10%. Why don't you sell cement in addition to that thing? Sell nails. Sell rods. That people will buy on a daily basis. So that when you hammer big money, you don't pay school fees from there. I don't you understand somebody for you. In my house, my wife is my pastor's wife. That's why I'm always excited to see her. Five o'clock on the bed. If you must be rich, you must quarrel with sleep. Bible says a little sleep, a little slumber, and poverty will come like an arm rub and bail up you. Some of you here that come and beg money, 6 o'clock, 6.30, That's my son. We have a canteen. 5 a.m., my wife has woken up, cooked rice. 50 59 a rice. Before now, the students were, people were saying, No, we open the canteen. They've cooked rice. My son, when he was graduating from Uniben, he bought popcorn making machine. We just put oil, we throw up granite, uh, put the popcorn and sugar. They start speaking in tongues. It's money. We tied. I was truly one day I saw potato chips. I told my wife, I said, potato is a powerful business. Um, Walter Raleigh that introduced potato into Europe, the Europeans hold him in high esteem because potato saved them. Potato originally was growing in South America. A sack of potato in Bomadi is 1,200. That sack of potato can give you up to 8,000 naira if you turn it to chips. So I was just walking around and I saw I saw a woman selling baking material. I said, you get, you get potato chip slicer? He said, yes. I said, okay. Give me four. When your daughters came, we just spilled one small potato like this. You got to expand. My cup run it over. We sell potato. Recently, my wife bought one book. They now bake cake. Sell pure water. If you see me selling pure water, you will know I'm your guest preacher. This coat is working cloth. When I'm looking for money, I wear nika and I wear jeans. Potato, pure water. Do you know that boy sells about 10,000 naira every day? I planted sugar cane in my compound. We were selling sugar, sugar cane of of 500 naira every day. For five days is 2,500. For a month is 10,000 naira sugar cane. So in my house, we don't wait for school fees. We don't wait for honorarium. Money comes like from different sources on a daily basis. And I'm looking for more to add. How many of you know Juvenic? Juvenic. How much here, yeah, Transamadi, Ataba? How many of you, can you compute how much you think that woman makes? It's just the Department of Stomach Sciences. The lady that cooked for me this afternoon, the food I ate, my mind was just asking me, does she have a franchise? Does she have a catering firm? To have an anointing to cook and cook for only your husband is a waste. And to cook for guest preachers is a waste. You can design a franchise. Her food was, the packaging, everything. Was, in fact, the egusi soup was born again. You know, there are some egusi soup that need deliverance. You know, egusi soup that needs deliverance. 
the one that runs 40 kilometers per hour. By the time you put the air like this, it's already in your armpit. That one is cooked with notebook. Put two teaspoons of pepper. And those of you whose daughters, you have stewards that cook for your daughters. Abiyageli cooks for your daughter. Your daughter might disgrace you one day. Food. How many of you know Crunchies? Crunchies. Crunchies is owned by Anazodo. Anazodo, we are in full gospel businessmen fellowship together in our Potakot Road chapter. Before he became a field rep. I don't, his friend, who was the chapter president, Pete Ejiogu, read uh, botany or read um, chemistry. Anazodo's father was selling marbles, Giovanni marbles, and selling building materials. When the economy went down, Anazodo went into producing um, crunches. Crunches is all over the country. He is a pharmacist by training. If your degree cannot make you a millionaire, hide it. Don't strangulate your destiny with a tie. It's a British symbol of slavery. <laughs> Remove it. What is, who, who goes school past doctor? I went to Federal Government College where I must be intelligent. I went to Government College Ugele. I went to UI. I never had receipt one day in medical school. I had A in physics, A in chemistry, A in biology, A in geography, A in economics. Only P7 in English because I know what is English where my mouth. But I'm a preacher. I don't mind me. People are paying to listen to me. Is it medicine that is feeding me? My classmate, who is a professor of pediatrics in New York, came recently. And, and, and he was screaming that he was coming back to Nigeria. You pay me two million naira a month to work in a hospital, I won't work. That can feed me, can't take care of my needs. I removed for many years, I wasn't wearing coat. I was only wearing Accra and leather sandals. So that in case of any opportunity, you can join the primary six people to do it. And money has no certificate attached to it. Money now, money. How many people who worked in Shell have petrol stations in this town? Most graduates live in the buildings of semi illiterates. Your degree. It's just a license for life is buying and selling, according to Brian Tracy. So, food. Somebody say food. Say it again, no. Oh. Anything that has to do with the dining table until your hand is involved in it. I have a fish pond in my compound. Instead of putting money in the bank, that's much more money they dash me. I buy fish feed because it will increase in weight faster. I have 2,000 pieces of fish in my compound now. If I can rear them to weigh a kilogram each, a kilogram up to two acres of fish farm. Wow. He told me that he exports catfish from Ugeli to China. He dries them and puts them in cartons and sends to an African restaurant there. And that all the swamps around him, do you know now he imports, recently he sold 30 tons of fish. The last house in my street is owned by a northerner. He sold 900,000 from oranges. His king sold 47 million from oranges. We have oil and we are proud. We are being militants for oil. If they not, Boko Haram is a very traditional. If they want to kill us, it won't take them two days. Let me keep It's from the north. The cow you eat is from the north. The sugar cane you eat from is from the north. The pepper is from the north. The tomatoes, the yam, the guinea fowl. 
Have you seen an unemployed Muslim before? We do not produce anything apart from people that can speak big grammar and kidnap people. Particularly we, Urobo, Ishekiri, Ijo, Kalabari. This oil will finish our eye with clear. Food. Am I speaking to somebody? Else? Food. And our land is so fertile. You just cut. My sister-in-law comes to buy ugu here from Okro Market. Go to LMA Park now. I go for it. You will see women with ugu. My sister-in-law sells nothing less than 60,000 naira every week from ugu. Ugu. A man that works in an oil company bought land from me for his wife to plant ugu. Fruited pumpkin. Vegetable. I know a woman that was planting. She was a, one of the most senior accountants in Abia State. She was planting vegetables in Ogbo Hill, where we lived. She would plant vegetables. Wrap them in the evening. Put in a luxurious bus. Sent to mile two. The sun will collect them to Kutonu. And she will earn foreign exchange from Ugu. Food. Food. The next thing is something that has to do with education. Now, pastor service. For you to create wealth, look for a need in your environment. Supply it. There's a lot of hold up in this town. If you can start a company that transports children to school, Huh? I have four buses. I carry 250 children every day. Madam, look up, please. Do you know each child pays 8,000 naira? Multiply that by 250. It's a small company on its own, minus school fees. Because of the hold up, if you start, I don't know if it is already here, if you start school run Nigerian Limited, Buy Siena or buy a coastal bus. One share return, 3.5 million, 4 million with AC. Collect children from an axis. The parents will be so happy to pay you. Those of you who are graduates, you like doing guy. I was driving my school bus myself. I still drive it till today. I use Pathfinder to carry children to school. What do you make them buy monkey? Not to play. No go be person. Pathfinder is not for posing for money. School run. Anything that has to do with school, particularly the junior classes. Hey. When people close from school on a daily basis, don't you see them? You see multitude of children. Look for one thing that they will desire, that they will do, supply it. We had a bookshop, one small house, one small shop. My wife was the one selling before. Church people, church people. Church people. The Bible says the wicked borrow it and pay it not. That is wickedness. What of the person that borrows or buys and pay it not and then quarrels with you and gives you a bad name? That should be a witch. If you see your church member coming to patronize you, suspect that person. Maybe he doesn't have money at that time. Because when they have money, I don't know your school, though. My experience with running Church of God Mission School, when they have money, they won't come to your school. It's when they lose their jobs that they bring their children. Maybe your members are good people. The ones I stayed with, they were Akroka people. So we are running the bookshop. My wife. My wife will be the one selling. Uh, the, mommy, <laughs> mommy, the mommy. I beg, I want some books. So next week I go bring money. My wife will momoishly sell. When the companies will come, we won't see money to pay them back. Then that my son, he doesn't speak Urobo. 
doesn't have friends. He hardly smiles unless I amuse him. Unless he sees money. He speaks only Igbo. It's only recent he started speaking Pigeon English. Before now, he doesn't know how to speak Pigeon English. So we put him in the bookshop. We will collect books from Macmillan, Lantern, Retican. You don't pay. When you sell, you return money. We put him there. Do you know this boy squeezed his face? The first week of resumption, we sold half a million from books. And we are selling half a million weekly for many weeks from books. Erasers. I don't know if the children eat erasers. They eat it. If you know how much erasers we sell on a daily basis, then the ruler, when they buy the ruler, they will make like this. There's an Anglican priest that retired from Ugeli. His bookshop was opposite a bookshop near them. Sell at a price lower than what they will get in the market. Get turnover. Books. Money is an idiot. Gives, was giving me 250,000 naira every month. One book. When some foolish pastors will just come to the building we are building, they will just lay their hands and say, I tap into this grace. I say, cement will stain your hand. Until you know what I do. Anything that has to do with learning, you can come together as a group, form a consortium. The lawyer is there, delivers lectures on wheels, and whatever, another person delivers lecture on one thing, form a company and start consulting with, with different oil companies. Somebody called me, are you Dr. Poker? I say yes. Are you the writer of money? I say yes. He said, my mommy bought your book. Can you deliver a seminar on stress management to Nepal managers from Edo, Delta, Ekiti? And I say yes. So how much do you take? My wife was doing like pastor's wife. I said, shh. Now, Nepa. I charge them per hour. When I finished lecturing them on stress management, all the electric bills I paid since I was paying bills, I collected. They now, they now called me back. Doctor, can you give us another lecture on so, 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 so? Have you increased your price? I say, yes. Have you not increased your tariff? <laughs> this is a brain generation. Use your brain and look for a need. Police wanted to recruit people. One boy that studied the same computer science you studied that you are using to browse nonsense. <laughs> My brother... 1.2 billion will change your color. I'm telling you. It will change your praise and worship. This era, anything that has to do with knowledge will pay. I'm going back to school. I've collected form for MPA, Masters in Public Admin. I want to get a PhD. If I add that to my complimentary card, and I graduate from this church level of uh, teaching to, you know, church people, after preaching, they'll give you one flimsy up and say, may the Lord go with you as if the devil came with you. <laughs> I, start, I start to deliver lectures for companies. They will pay me more. My brain is feeding me oh, a lot. I make a lot of money from my brain and mouth. My wife walks big. I say, I don't have that strength now. I was walking before. Now I just think, this towards the end of the world, knowledge will be something that people will hunger after if you can provide it. Why is Agafure rich? Transport, public transport for the masses. Peace mass transit. 
public transport. Eh? We'll come to that. Look for something, a service. The next thing that will bring money is environmental services. An increase in population, a lot of refuse will be generated. The person that can dispose of this refuse well will make money. The man that carries my dustbin in Ugeli, I pay him three, uh, is it 2,000 naira a month? In our street, there are five companies. He collects 10,000 naira. I just give you a, a simple example. Assuming you finish your service now and you don't want to leave River State, you start an environmental sanitation company. Go to the GROA. Tell them you will sweep their compounds on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. They should pay you 10,000 10, or 5,000. 5, you size them. Do you know 10 streets? If you have 10 buildings here, that's 50,000. If it's 5,000. 5, 10 streets is 500,000. Go to one of the nearby villages, bring a woman. Tell her that she should clean the compounds for you. For you are charging uh, uh, 5,000, 5, 50,000. Tell her to clean the 10 compounds for 20,000 or 30,000. Make sure you make uniform for her. Put rank. Make sure you put rank. El Shaddai cleaners. Do you know you'll be making neat money, differential money on top of them? And make sure you are changing them every week so that they don't stay in the same compound and get used to the landlord and negotiate in your absence. The woman that sweeps my compound will pay her 5,000 naira a month. Between uh, 6 o'clock she will come. And 8 o'clock, she has swept four compounds, 20,000 in that street. If she moves to another place, moves to another place. By 11, she has swept so many compounds and will still go to work. Then you say there's nothing to do. After service, you come and beg pastor money. Then you say there's no love in the church. It's your mumurity that is wrong with you. If I am a security guard, and I want to go to Dubai in the next three years. I will go and look for work in a big hotel. I will tell them to put me on permanent night. Before, am I not supposed to be a, am I supposed to sleep as night watchman? I will, each car is 200 naira. I will not watch 504 because the owner might not pay and he might not start in the morning. I will not watch bus. It will take too much time. I will start with the jeeps. By the time I wash 10 jeeps, it's 2,000 naira. 2,000 naira times 20 days is how much? Eh? 40,000. For a month, a year, is 480,000. Two years is 960,000. And they are still paying you your usual salary. 960,000. Tell your wife to go to Senegal to bring Senegalese lace. Or go to Dubai to bring diodes or, or ices. Or even some suits in China are 4,000 naira. 4,000 naira suit in China. When they tell you buy two with that you want, you think they are good Samaritans. The thing is 4,000 naira in China. 400,000 will give you 1,000 suits. The boy that gave me these suits gave me 10. He was a houseboy to his pastor before. If you die of poverty, blame yourself. There's so much to do. Tomorrow I pray we'll come and we'll continue from there. Let's stand up to pray.